So these two features, non-rivalness and non-excludability, define the public good. Is the Natural History Museum such a good? Well, we've established that it's non-rival, but is it also non-excludable? They have a wall around it and they say, you can't come in unless we allow you to. Now here, the decision is not to charge for entry. It's free to come in and to look at the exhibits. But it's still an excludable good because they can exclude people from its consumption and they could levy a charge if it was felt to be appropriate. So is the Science Museum, is the Natural History Museum, is the Art Gallery a public good? Well, it's a semi-public good because it has the feature of non-rivalness, but it has the feature of excludability. It's a non-rival, excludable good. So an art gallery or a museum would be examples of goods which are not public goods because although they are non-rival, they are excludable. The statue of Eros in London is a public good. The two key features of a public good are non-rivalness and non-excludability. Goods which are produced by the public sector are actually not necessarily public goods at all. In many countries there's a health service which is free at the point of consumption. If you have an accident, you'll receive emergency care at a zero price at the point of consumption. And although it's provided by the state, it's a rival good. If you're riding in an ambulance, the ambulances occupied are not available for someone else. It's also excludable. A surgeon could refuse to treat you unless you pay. Perhaps you could be denied treatment through a long waiting list. So the provision of this service is in no sense a public good. It's a good which, for various reasons, the government has decided to provide.